Okay, it's day one, uh, end of Impulse 1, and uh, things did not go very well for the Pact. Uh, first of all, uh, NATO rolled uh, 3 for its activation, so it could activate most of its units. The Pact rolled a 6, which means it had broken orders, so something got messed up in the uh, communication um, communication between the headquarters and the battalions. So, basically, NATO went first, uh, moved a couple of units just to uh, try to get in front of the Pact, and uh, the pact followed with uh, only an activation of one. Uh, it managed to activate both the 47th and the first guard's tank. Uh, so far, what happened was um, down here, the uh, 47th guards tried to hit uh, tank division from the U.S. Fifth Tank, U.S. Fifth Corps, and uh, it got hammered uh, by defensive fire. So. Basically, that means that the Russians rolled a 7 on their attack rolls and took damage instead of inflicting anything. The only time they did manage to um, cause any damage was when they called in a gunship down here, uh, and the Hinds uh, managed to uh, damage the, uh, the U.S. tank division, or U.S. tank battalion. Um, up here, uh, with the West Germans, if we look closer, um, we had a bit more luck. Uh, the pack didn't quite take as much uh, damage in terms of defensive fire, but it didn't really make much progress either. It did do a little damage to the uh, to the tank battalion of the 1st Brigade, 1st uh, Panzer, around Eben, but that's about it. There really hasn't been anything in terms of major damage towards unit uh, NATO at this point. Uh, NATO did manage to call in an airstrike uh, this turn, and it uh, effectively uh, damaged very badly, um, two tank um, two tank regiments of uh, the 47th Guards Motorized Rifle Division. So right now it's all up in the air. Um, nothing much has happened here in the middle. The Pact has just kind of moved its units and, and it's sitting there right now. It can't attack, can't do much of anything. So that's uh, phase one. Next uh, impulse will be uh, impulse two of day one and uh, we've got um, two regiments coming in to reinforce the Soviets, so NATO could be in big trouble if Russia can get its, um, its, its act together here. Anyway, uh, off to uh, day one, impulse two. Well, it's day one, uh, the end of impulse two, and uh, things have gotten a lot better for the pact uh, this turn. Uh, NATO rolled high on its activation, so it did get to go first. Um, it managed to um, hurt a couple of tank uh, uh, battalions up north near Eben. Um, but for the most part, this turn was all packed. Um, the pact managed to destroy uh, the 1st Brigade's um, armor battalion, the West Germans, uh, parked up near Eben. And we've got kind of a breakthrough going on up here up north, and I'll just zoom in so you can see what's happening here. So you can see that Eben is now nearly surrounded. Um, basically, we've got these. Uh, West Germans sitting here in the city and one uh, damaged uh, armored battalion down here south uh, southwest of it but otherwise the pact has managed to sort of almost surround the whole city and it's going to start hammering on it next uh, some of these are reinforcements that have entered in as well down south things went uh, quite well for the pact too not quite as good as up north, um, but generally speaking, uh, the gunships again were called in and the Hinds again managed to inflict some damage on an American uh, armored battalion, um, which is now really hurting. Um, as you can see, the pact has sort of moved its reinforcements in between uh, the little um, gaps um, of uh, zones of control and is about to push down towards Eisenbach. So, this is a really dangerous situation right now for NATO. Um, it looks like the pact is about to break through. Lucky for NATO, they have um, some reinforcements coming in on the next impulse. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it's been kind of an exciting start to the game. One impulse three has just finished, and uh, we started off with uh, NATO choosing its AN, uh, chose an AN of three, and uh, managed to move a couple of reinforcements onto the board. Um, they're over here on the west side. Um, they've just entered in. The 3rd Brigade, Brigade has uh, moved all of its guys here. 
uh, hoping to rush east to reinforce uh, this line here around Eisenbach and uh, northwest of it, uh, northeast of it rather. Um, NATO is kind of getting hammered here. Um, the pact has managed to really inflict some damages. It hasn't destroyed any uh, American units yet, but it's uh, definitely got them on the ropes. Um, if we look over here, um, you can see that um, the, uh, the second brigade has taken some damage and uh, the first brigade is the only one that hasn't taken any kind of major hits. Uh, the second brigade, which is up here, has uh, basically gotten surrounded almost, um, well, not surrounded, but it's definitely um, got a lot of enemies to contend with up here. A small trickle of tanks um, has made it down here towards Eisenbach, and it's threatening the city. There's only one infantry unit defending it, so um, that's not good. Hopefully the uh, Americans can reinforce that before Eisenbach falls. Um, up here, sorry, up here in the north, um, with the Germans, uh, the first guards tank is uh, hammering around Eben, um, and uh, it hasn't surrounded the city, but um, the second brigade has rushed in to sort of um, help the uh, the first brigade out a little, um, but it's taken, um, it hasn't really gotten into the fight yet. The Soviets have managed to uh, eliminate an infantry unit sitting in Eben. And now there's only a, a lonely little recon unit sitting in there. And uh, so far it's holding out, but um, I don't think it's going to hold out much longer. So basically the pact has got NATO in some trouble right now, and um, we'll see what happens next. Getting to the end of day one here, uh, it's the end of Impulse 4, uh, day one. And um, the, uh, the activation rules were 5 for the pact and 2 for NATO. Uh, the pact... Um, had such a high activation rule that um, it was able to only activate uh, maybe two or three tank uh, battalions. Uh, so not much was really done or accomplished. Uh, there were a couple of attacks, uh, one most notably in Eben that managed to uh, reduce the, uh, the recon battalion that's sitting there um, a little bit, but uh, really no big advances at all for the pack this turn. Uh, NATO had an activation number of two, which meant that it could activate quite a few units, but only move them very slowly. Um, so in other words, we had these reinforcements over here, the, um, sorry, the third brigade down here managed to make its way along the highway and is getting closer to Eisenbach. Um, the Soviets managed a one effective attack against Eisenbach, uh, reducing the U.S. infantry there from the second brigade. But the um, U.S. is still holding on there. So it looks like things are actually sort of um, balancing out a little in terms of uh, the game. Uh, it'll be the night phase next, and the Soviets will undoubtedly send the rest of their day one reinforcements in after this. Um, it kind of hurt them not to have those guys available to sort of follow up. If we look at the situation here, um, over by um, the east of Eisenbach, you can see that the Americans have pretty much cleaned up the Soviets around there. So there's really not much of a threat at all going on um, around the east side of Eisenbach. But uh, that's in stark contrast to the uh, situation up north where the Soviets are battering the West Germans around Eben. So on to the night phase and then day two. It's come to a complete close now. Um, the night phase is now finished. Um, NATO made a couple of uh, recovery rolls, um, the pack didn't make any. Um, there was a little bit of movement, but the pack only had a, one activation and the NATO had uh, two activations. So uh, basically what happened was um, these infantry down here, these American infantry, raced up towards Eisenbach to help reinforce it, but um, they weren't quite able to make it over the bridge in time. So uh, hopefully tomorrow morning they'll be able to get there and save the beleaguered NATO unit that's sitting in there. Um, the Soviet reinforcements finally uh, got uh, on the board. Um, they were late getting in there. Um, so we've got the first pact up here, and, or first guard's tank up here, and the uh, 47th down here, um, both rushing in. Uh, we've had the uh, 48th guard's um, battalions um, up here sort of moving steadily west, they might be able to make a break for it. Up here we've got a single uh, First Guards unit kind of sneaking around, so 
possibly um, these three units could try to make their way off the board and score a victory point for the packed forces. Um, generally speaking, not much has happened up uh, as term in terms of fighting. Both sides have basically uh, hunkered down for the evening and tried to lick their wounds. Uh, there, hasn't, <clears throat> there hasn't been really much in terms of uh, action going on here, although there is some sneaking around at night. Movement points are generally reduced by one, I believe, and combat rolls are even uh, reduced by one. So there's not a lot of point in fighting, although you might get to move around a couple of units if you're lucky. Um, so that's it. Day one has been semi-successful for the pact. They've, gotten, they've managed to get a few units past the NATO... Um, the NATO defenders, but um, overall the Americans have done a really nice job of sort of cleaning up the board down here while the West Germans have managed to hang on up north. So um, things don't look too bad for NATO and things are looking okay for the pact if they can get their reinforcements in there and start ham hammering away a little more effectively. And we'll see how it goes on day two.